Even though the temperature has started to drop, the weeds still keep growing, they never give up. I did started weeding this, this is the brassica bed, put the speed out through, but on reflection I just had a quick look here and it's just as quick on this occasion to weed it by hand, it's uh, come out very, very easy. So I'll just spend the next few minutes clearing this up. And now for something completely different, it's uh, inside the shed, something you don't see very often. Um, this is a 6x4 shed and it's split in half right, with the plot hole to be made the other side and uh, I've just had a little clean out. Tidy in the bottom, I'll put a piece of polycarb on the floor there just to stop the damp rising. And that's just uh, deep enough to get to uh, mushroom boxes end on end. And it's here I'm going to be storing the fruit and onions. I've got a couple of boxes, or three there I think, I've got loads more onions to do. I'm going to string some up, but these are the ones that I've uh, decided to take the tops off. They've dried out lovely, so I'll put them in there. I've got three boxes there, so I've got some more. And in here, you may recall I recall, um, harvested the pears a bit early. I've let them dry out a little bit and uh, wrapped them up in newspaper. Just by keeping them together with no protection against each other, it's amazing how quickly they can go off. So them are all packed up in newspaper. I've got four boxes there and one there just to go on the top. And uh, I don't know how many will get in there all together, probably. And I'm probably about 12 boxes high, times two would be 24. So, uh, carry on having the tidy up. These are some apples that I've done. The early russet. And um, I'll just uh, carry on going, I'll show you when I finish. Well, I'm cleaning the shed out, I thought I'd uh, continue with the tidy up. These are some um, elephant garlic cloves that I've held back. I'm going to use these for bulbs, which I'll be doing maybe next month or month after. So I'll just uh, tidy them up, put them in these set of trays, and I'll pop, pop in them back in the shed, keep them cool and dry. I know it's a bit fine, but I'm going to put a few potatoes in a couple of buckets and hopefully get them ready for Christmas. I have a friend who lives over in Ireland and he kindly brought me this bag over. It's a variety it's called Queen's. I think you've seen them before maybe as British Queen. I've seen them. Never actually grown on myself, but uh, look a nice potato. And the ones in there have already got a few spruts coming on, so uh, I'm going to get them in the bucket. The mix that I'm using to put the potatoes in is uh, I'm using the spent potato compost from the ones I've harvested earlier. That's a 50% mix of that. And the other thing is uh, well rotted horse manure, so that's a combination of the two. And I'll also be adding a decent bit of fish blood and bone. Continuing with my usual method, I put uh, two tubers in there in line with the handles of the bucket. Put another three or four inches of compost on the top and put another two diagonally opposite each other. In the end, I've decided to do three buckets. You'll notice that I've topped them right up to the top, leaving a bit of room for some water. Uh, I can't be bothered with topping them up as they grow, it's, uh, it's a pain for me and also uh, it, you risk damaging the homes I think where they've already grown so by putting the soil there as it is there there's no more risk of damage when there's fresh soil going in. Um, these will stay out here on the allotment while the weather's nice, the soil's being warmed up in there. When it does drop cold I'll be popping them either into the cold frame with the double glaze units on or into the allotment greenhouse. Here are a few jobs that you may wish to consider on and around the plot for the month of September. Once the head of the sunflowers start to turn brown like this, cut them off but leave a bit of stem on here. Just give them a sore through. 
And then you can suspend that on a bit of string, hang them upside down, and the birds, particularly the blue tits, love to get the seeds out. With the autumn now approaching, still keep watering your celery. Don't let this dry out because it's an important part in this life cycle now. The blanching will continue and very soon we'll start picking. This time of year, Brussels sprouts are putting on a real good spurt. These things here, the buttons, well eventually they'll be the sprouts. They put on, say, put on growth, they'll actually lean towards the sun and then grow at a rapid rate. So, put a good sturdy stake in, this is a metal pole. And I use a bit of twine, and just soft twine, tie them to the support. If you do not actually give them support, they'll probably flop over because they do carry a lot of weight. Now once that's done, check them quite regular. Give them a tie in, jobs are good. Check on a regular basis any fruits or that you have in store just to see if there's none of the stuff gone rot. If it is, remove it immediately because it will rapidly spread to the surrounding fruits and ruin the lot. Watering in the greenhouse can now be throttled back because the days are not getting so hot and uh, the plants there have time to dry out and it will also increase the chances of ripening the fruits. As the day draws to a close, close any window open, vent side, vents or anything, because during the night now the temperatures are dropping well low single figures and the other occasion we may have the odd frost. This time of year the light levels fall drastically so uh, it's a good idea if you've got any shading on the greenhouse be it physical stuff like this or the white wash which goes on the glass consider about removing it now because you want to maximize the light where it actually goes in and it'll help ripen the remaining fruits on the trusses in there now's a good time to get hold of a few seed catalogues and have a look at the autumn planted onion sets and also the garlic in there. If you get in there early it gives you a much wider selection. I've just harvested another five cauliflowers, they're all coming at once again. Um, some are better than others. We do suffer from club root on this site and uh, so these have got no sign of it at all. The roots are more nice and clear. And uh, this is a variety called Clapton, which is a club root resistant variety. Uh, if you do suffer from club root, it's well worth giving these a try if you haven't because all the time we're growing these, I've never had any problems. So this is today's harvest, tidied up. You have a very small window to harvest these before they actually blow. So uh, the one at the bottom right is, uh, looks like that maybe be a little bit past it, but all in all, I'm happy with those. And so the variety is called Clapton. 
we've just harvested the banana shots. Um, there's half a dozen or so here, they call the long red florence, I didn't put many of those in. But these are predominantly the Zabrun, which you're more familiar with. And I'll just clean them up, put them in the basket and leave them to dry out. I'll show you when I'm finished. I was checking through the fruit for storage. Anything with any sign of damage or bruising, I've put aside, and what I've done, I've sliced it up thinly, put it out onto the allotment, and surprisingly, it's attracted quite a large number of butterflies, the Red Admiral in particular. Now, these are one of my favourites. Well, that's about it for this one. Just a little reminder, the weekend of the 28th and 29th of September sees the annual Malvern Autumn Show. It's a great gardening event and something for everyone. There's a marvellous display of the wonderful harvests of all the fruit and vegetables, and in particular, we'll see some of the big joint veg. I'll be there, so if you do see me, come over and say hello, it'd be nice to meet. That's it, till the next one, see you later, bye for now. <laughs>